everyone. Welcome to this dime bag tone tutorial, if you want to call it that. It's been requested quite a bit over the past few years, mainly since I did my second video with this guitar actually, demonstrating the tone. Um, it's long overdue. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the description for you to check out as well. Now, what you just heard at the start of the video was pretty much the raw tone, mic'd up with the Shure SM57 in front of a Marshall 1960 cab with a vintage 30s. I didn't have any extra EQ in post, just a little bit of compression to get rid of the lows because they are like that the amp is really basic. But essentially, that's the tone we're going to get in this video. However, there's a couple of things I should mention first uh, before we start. One is if you're looking to get Dimebag's tone on budget, then this video probably isn't for you because most of this is quite rare. Um, it's mainly for people who already have this gear. If you're having trouble with how to get a decent sound out of it, or just understanding it, or most, as most people are curious about how I get my tone, um, then that's basically what we're gonna go for. Also, just like most of my recent videos with his tone, um, I'm only gonna be using the Washburn. I do have a Dean as well, but it's been out of commission for the past two or three years, I think. I would usually use that for the older albums, mainly Cowboys, uh, but other one, the older ones as well. Um, but it just makes sense since this is in the same tuning as my last video and we'll be trying to get that exact tone. It will just give a better example, really. Now that's out of the way, I'm gonna go through all the gear I'm using from the guitar first, uh, right through, through the signal chain. Um, and I'm gonna dial in all the settings as I go through each unit uh, to give you a better demonstration of what's happening and do, you'll hear exactly what I'm doing. So let's get started. First off, got the uh, USA Washburn Slime. Uh, straight into the six band, of course, then into the Furman. You can have it either way around. It doesn't really make much difference to me, um, but I'll leave that up to you. Then straight into this DBX 266XL compressor and gate. Um, it's dual channel, which is handy. Um, I'll explain why in a minute. We've got that straight into the front of the amp, of course. Uh, then in the loop, we have the flanger doubler, but instead of going straight into the back into the Randall, I've got it going into the second channel of the uh, the gate. It's a bit awkward because you can't really, if you want to hit, hit notes and get that reverb, the drone out afterwards, if you want the reverb on, it just cuts out. So you've got to set it up right and if you're just playing rhythm it's great it will cut out that hiss that the doubler makes because it it does add a little bit of noise i don't know if it's just my unit but it is there i'll show you that when i get to it as well so before we jump into the dialing in the settings i'll give you a quick demonstration of what it sounds like with nothing boosting it <laughs> almost clean sounding really so if we look at the settings I've got it all on my computer here um, so I know exactly what I'm doing because I can't remember it all start with the sixth band what I usually do I have the 100 Hertz slightly lower just under really be all in the, uh, the usual frown position as everyone knows but the way I like to do this is have a steeper angle on the lows so roughly roughly about there and then with the highs we'll make instead of going up to on 800 instead of going up to the 18 decibels we'll bring it just down slightly just under and then we'll have a shallower angle going back down because what I think this does I, I need to have the lows quite low just to get rid of the boomy lows on the amp will produce when you have it cranked up or have the bass cranked up uh, and the highs having them a bit shallower should compensate for the lack of gain you've got going on here but it will still add a lot of crunch and a lot of meat I'll give you a quick demonstration again <laughs> Getting there, definitely. Move on to the Furman. 
Hey guys, sorry to interrupt myself, but I need to say I really screwed up the PQ4 settings here when filming. So if you wonder why the settings change a bit in between cuts, then that's the reason. The settings I'm showing you are basically as damage plan settings, but tweaked ever so slightly to complement my rig. So I'm not claiming them to be my own, but that being said, I do still like to experiment sometimes and switch things up a bit, which is a point I'll make in the video. First off, I'll do the input level. Roughly about that. Starting to get noisy now, so get the noise gate on. So we've got the gain stage going on. We'll get these ones adjusted now. Roughly about there. Sounded a bit not as ballsy. But bring the gain up on that. I never really go over plus three. It's usually just sitting on there. So on this one, we'll bring all of them up slightly. I only do this, it's my own preference. I mean, very, only slightly pushing it. And then the third, again, plus three. Narrow the bandwidth. Then play around with this one and just keep turning it until you get that sound that you like. So just play around with the settings really, mainly the frequency knobs, and just find that right sweet spot for your amp. These two frequencies will give most of the crunch um, and that bite that you need, but it will just kind of tighten everything up so it's not too fizzy. I can hear it, but I don't know how it sounds on the mic. You can hear this one kind of tightening up a bit. Sounds pretty good. Moving on to the amp settings. Presence. This is the one where it's going to give you either a really bitey, scratchy sound. It almost works with the treble really. A bit low. You get a bit of a mid crunch going on. Pretty good for lead as well, to be honest. You don't want it too sharp. But this again, this is one you just play around with to your own liking, depending on your speakers as well. The vintage 30s I've got here are quite crunchy and mid rangey. So you can get away with having it a little bit up. Uh, I usually put the treble down slightly, say a little bit lower than what his settings apparently are. Middle, again, just kind of play around with what sounds good. Usually, yeah, so usually about how we had it. Bass, this is the tricky one. I don't like to have it up very high at all because it's just it's too overpowering to me. But lastly, um, of the flanger doubler. Now this, I don't understand fully yet. Really don't. <laughs> um, the best things I've found by tweaking randomly is basically this. If anyone knows how to use these things, um, thinks I'm doing it completely wrong, by all means, let me know. Um, I could do with the help. <laughs> To me, the mix sounds a little bit too distant if you have it anywhere past nine o'clock. So, like two five, it only just past it. Kind of, it gives it a little bit of the delay, but keeps it sounding clear.
what I've got going on with the noise gate. <coughs> Currently got it the second channel off. So let's put it on. Really nice and tight. That's what the MXR flange and doubler does when it's off. So it's a bit of a hiss. I'm not sure if you can pick it up, but so if you have it off. Crank the reverb up a little bit. Well, I really hope this video helped you guys out and answered some of your questions. Uh, and if it didn't, you have any more, just leave a comment and I'll try to help out as best I can. I am actually thinking about doing some more tutorials in the future, um, possibly some lessons, and maybe even some gear reviews. This is given that I get the demand for it all. Until then, if you like this video, of course, give it a like, subscribe and hit the bell if you do want to see more, and I'll catch you in the next one.